Storytime friends. How are you today? I am so glad to be with you. My name is Miss Wendy. I am with the Rockbridge Regional Library in Lexington, and it is a special time of year. It is a time for us to be giving thanks. So before we get too far into it, let's do our hello song. So hello song goes like this. We'll say hello and then friends. This means friends in sign language. So you have two friends and they're going to hug. So we'll say hello, friends, and we'll say it's time to say hello. And we'll do it twice. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Well, I am so glad you're here today. And again, we are coming upon Thanksgiving. So I know you guys know a lot about Thanksgiving, but this week we're going to really focus on what it means to give thanks, what it means to be thankful. And we're going to think about things that we are thankful for every day, as well as during Thanksgiving. So, but before we do all of that, it is super important that we warm up our bodies and get ourselves moving. So let's warm up. I'm going to move my camera back so that we have space because, you know, we need space for moving and big, big movements. So today I thought it'd be fun to pull out our story time pouch. Now, one of these could be yours. Just leave me a note in the comments and I'll put one at the home desk for you. That way you have your own story time pouch to pull out when it's time for stories. So first, we're gonna do the egg shaker song. So if you have an egg shaker, grab it. If you don't have an egg shaker, you can find something in your cabinet like box of macaroni and cheese works well. Make sure it's closed though. <laughs> I've made that mistake once before. Okay, so if you have your egg shakers, we're gonna begin. One, two, three. Egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing all around the town. We dance them on our shoulders dance them on our heads, we dance them on our knees, and tuck them into bed. That's good. Now, I like to do it super slow motion, just to give myself a challenge. Are you up for a challenge? Okay, so we're going to do it super slow. One, two, three, egg shakers up. Egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing all around the town. We dance them on our shoulders. It's hard to go slow. Dance them on our heads. We dance them on our knees and tuck them into bed. <laughs> okay. Final challenge, final warm up, egg shaker song as fast as we can do it. Okay? Like lightning speed. You guys ready? One, two, three. Egg shakers up, egg shakers down, egg shakers dancing all around the town. We dance them on our shoulders, we dance them on our head, we dance them on our knees, and we tuck them into bed. I barely got through that. I don't even know what happened. It went so fast. <laughs> so, are you guys all warmed up and ready to go? Okay, great. Let me put, let's all put our egg shakers down. Back where we found them. Not in the middle of the floor. <laughs> okay. So here's a question for you. Are you ready for a story? I am. So let's do our beginning to read song. Here we go. One, two, three. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. 
If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Now let's do it a little bit different. Next one, we're going to stomp our feet, but instead of saying, if you're ready for a story, let's say, if you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet, okay? If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. Okay, we'll go back to the original for sitting down. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. Hold it. Ah, it's so hard to stay still. Okay. Well, I'm ready for a story. But before we begin, let's do some deep breathing. I'm thankful for deep breaths. They help. Okay. First finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Middle finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Ring finger and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Pinky and thumb. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And finally, thumbs up because you're ready for Thanksgiving. Deep breath in, deep breath out. All right, shall we read our first book? I think so too. Let me get my camera. Let's go see what we have to read today. Got all kinds of interesting books today. Here's what we're going to be reading. <clears throat> but first off, Let's read this one. This is a really interesting and wonderful book. It's about a Cherokee tribe and how they give thanks and show gratefulness. This is called We Are Grateful. Ojaliheliga means we are grateful. Oops, I forgot to say who it was written by. This is written by Tracy Sorrell and illustrated by Frane Lesac. And this comes to us from Charles Bridge, is the publisher. Look at that, looks like it's harvesting time. Cherokee people say, Ojaliheliga, to express gratitude. It is a reminder to celebrate our blessings and reflect on struggles daily, throughout the year, and across all seasons. Uli go has di. That means fall. When cool breezes blow and leaves fall, we say, O jali he liga. As shell shakers dance all night around the fire and burnt cedar scents drift upward during the great new moon ceremony. As we clean our houses, wear new clothes, enjoy a feast and forget old quarrels to welcome the Cherokee New Year. Wow, that's beautiful. While we collect buckbrush and honeysuckle to weave baskets, to remember our ancestors who suffered hardships and loss on the Trail of Tears, and have hope as our Elisi, or grandma, cradles the newest member of the family and reveals his Cherokee name. Gola, which means winter. As bears sleep deep and snow blankets the ground, we say Ojaliheliga, 
in the winter. We are grateful in the winter. While elders share stories and we savor buttery bean bread and steamy hominy soup, when we feed our animal and bird friends, as older children teach the younger ones how to make corn husk dolls and play cane flutes, while we gather to remember an uncle who has passed on, as men cuddle babies and sing traditional lullabies in Jaligi, Cherokee. Gogiyi, which is spring, when showers fill streams and shoots spring up. Gogiyi. While men sing, asking for thunder and lightning's protection of the emerging sprouts that women tend. As we gather wild onions, spring's first food, and serve them with hen's eggs. As we practice patience to sew pucker toe moccasins and coil clay to build beautiful pots. As we plant ani, strawberries, and ancestral stories, sweet smelling reminder not to argue with each other. As we embrace a clan relative heading off to serve our country. Gogia. Sorry, Gogi, which is summer. As the crops mature and the sun scorches, we say, Ojalihe Liga. We are grateful. Look at all that, those crops, lots and lots of food growing for the community. When we grasp our gigs and wade into the cool creek to catch crawdads for supper, as we sink our teeth into the season's first harvest at the green corn ceremony, while we click clack sticks, chase a small ball, and fling it high at the stickball game pole. That looks like fun. When we recall the ancestors' sacrifices to preserve our way of life, to celebrate Nuletine Dilo, Dola <laughs> history, and listen to our tribal leaders speak at the Cherokee National Holiday. Every day, every season, Oja Lihe Liga, we are grateful. Let us remember that and also check out that awesome treehouse. I want a tree house. This is a really great book and it's a wonderful one to share this time of year with your family. So definitely come check this out at the library so you can learn some of the words too. It has all of the pronunciations there to help us know how to say the words. Of course, I didn't do a great job, but that's okay as long as you try. Okay, let me put my book back here. Now this song is about being thankful. It's called Let's Be Thankful. And we sing it to the tune of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Now, I know you know Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Okay, that's the melody. So the words say, let's be thankful for this day. Okay, now we're going to sing it through twice because that way you can hear the words. And then the next one, you can sing along with me. Okay, here we go. One two, three. Let's be thankful for this day, for our friends and for our play. Let's be thankful, let's be glad for our food and the things we have. Let's give thanks for you and me, for our home and family. Isn't that nice? I feel, I think we should all learn this song this Thanksgiving. So we'll sing it today and we'll sing it tomorrow. Okay, let's try it again. One, two, three. Let's be thankful for this day, for our friends and for our play. 
Let's be thankful, let's be glad for the food and the things we have. Let's give thanks for you and me and for home and family. We all have a lot to be thankful for if we just stop and think about it for a minute. So, you guys ready to read another book? I am. Let's go see what it is next. Okay. Thanks for Thanksgiving. You know, it's important to give thanks this time. Stop it, you know, for a period of time and just really think about all of the things that we have to be thankful for every day, not just at Thanksgiving. So this is called, but this one is about Thanksgiving. So it is called Thanks for Thanksgiving. And it's by Julie Marks. And it's illustrated by Doris Barrett. All right, let's see what happens. It looks like they're having fun, whatever is happening. I see apples. <clears throat> this comes to us from Harper Collins, Collins Publishing. It looks like they're getting ready for a big feast. Ooh, look at this beautiful picture. A lot going on here. Thanks for Thanksgiving for turkey and pie. Thanks for fall and gold leaves flying by. Thank you for school. I love to feel smart. Thank you for music and dancing and art. Oh, little teddy bears dancing too. Mom's reading. Brothers playing music. Thank you for play dates, for swings, and for slides. Are you guys thankful for those things? I know I am. Whoosh. Thank you for hopscotch and piggyback rides. Do you guys get hit piggyback rides? Thanks for sweet puppies and soft furry cats. Thank you for dress up, red shoes and big hats. Oh, it's so fun to dress up. Thanks for umbrellas, for rain boots and puddles. Oh yeah, that's super fun. Thank you for mommy and warm, cozy cuddles. I think mommy's probably thankful for that too. Thank you for Daddy who rides on a sled. Thank you for kisses and tucks into bed. Thanks for the moon and the stars above. But most of all, thanks for the family I love. That is the most special thing to be thankful for. Happy Thanksgiving. Now this book's kind of fun because it has a place for you to, if it were your book, of course, a place for you to write out your thankful thoughts year after year, which is kind of fun. I hope you enjoyed that book. Thanks for Thanksgiving. Okay, guys. Now next, I'm about to embarrass myself because I have maybe the silliest turkey song ever written. Okay, here is my silliest ever turkey song, okay? It's called, I am a turkey big and fat. So we first do this, like we're boo, I'm a turkey big and fat. And when I walk, I walk like that. So we put our hands behind her and make tails with our fingers. And when I walk, I walk like that. The next line is, all year long, my corn I do not miss. So we're going to do little bird beaks getting our corn. And then finally, and when I talk, I talk like that. Gobble, gobble, gobble. And that's what we'll say. Okay. 
Are you ready? One, two, three. I'm a turkey, big and fat. And when I walk, I walk like that. All year long, my corn I do not miss. And when I talk, I talk like this. Gobble, gobble, gobble. This is our waddle right here. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. We might as well do it twice. Okay. One, two, three. I'm a turkey, big and fat. And when I walk, I walk like that. All year long, my corn I do not miss. And when I talk, I talk like this. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> okay. There it is, friends. I think we better just get on to the last book <laughs> before I do that again. <laughs> All right, let's see what we have. I've got one more book. One more book. And this one is called... <clears throat> Well, let's get over here. Now, this is a book about, you know, taking what we need because we don't want to take too much. Now, this mouse has gotten himself in trouble, I, I fear. I suppose we should read it and find out what happens. The book is called One is a Feast for Mouse, a Thanksgiving Tale. And this is by Judy Cox and illustrated by Jeffrey Ebler. And this comes to us from Holiday House out of New York. Oh, look, he's got his little situation there. Okay. After Thanksgiving, Dinner Mouse crept out of his hidey hole and looked around. Where is he? Oh, there he is. The house was quiet. Dad snoozed in his chair with his book. Mom dozed in front of the TV. Outside, the kids played football in the crisp yellow leaves. Cat curled up by the fire. He yawned and stretched his strappity tail. Then he closed his greeny eyes and went to sleep. Mouse scampered up the tablecloth. Thanksgiving leftovers were still on the table. So much to eat! Mouse saw a teensy tiny toothsome green pea all by itself underneath a plate. Give thanks, he thought. One will be a feast for me. Mouse rolled the pea across the tablecloth to take it back to his hidey hole. But his eyes were got bigger than his stomach. He saw six leftover cranberries glowing like rubies on a silver saucer. I'll just take one, he said to himself. One is a feast for me. He balanced one cranberry on top of the pea and started once again across the table to his hidey hole. Just then, he saw three olives, black and shiny in a dish. I'll just take one, he thought. One is a feast for me. He put the olive on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea, and carried the tidbits across the table. Oh boy. Then he saw the carrot stick, crunchy and munchy and orange. I'll just take one, he thought. One is a feast for me. He stuck one carrot stick into the hole of the olive, balanced both on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea, and started back to his hidey hole. Oh, goodness. How in the world is he going to do that? Then he saw mashed potatoes. Mouse potatoes, more like it. There was just one scoop left on the plate. I'll just take the plate, Mouse thought. What a feast I will have. He balanced the plate of potatoes on top of the carrot stick in the hole and the olive on top of the cranberry on top of the pea. Mouse started off across the table. All right, he's got all of it there. So far, so good. Then he saw the gravy, brown and luscious, in the silver gravy boat. Gravy for the mouse potatoes, he thought. I must have that for my feast. 
and he balanced the gravy boat on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick stuck in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea. And he started off. Ooh, this is getting tricky. Okay. But then he spotted the pumpkin pie. One slice of pie, brown and dimpled, with a collar of fluffy ice cream. So he balanced the pie on top of the gravy boat, on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick stuck in the hole in the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea, and started off across the table. Okay, now this is getting tricky. Oh, goodness. Oh, don't drop it. <laughs> but the pie slid. Oh, no. But Mouse caught it just in time. Mouse bobbed and bobbled across the tablecloth on the way to his hidey hole for this his Thanksgiving feast. He didn't see the cat creeping closer and closer. Careful, little mouse. But Mouse saw the turkey, brown and juicy, surrounded by with parsley. Much was gone. But there was enough left for one mouse to feast, or even two. I'll just add that, thought Mouse. And he carefully placed the turkey platter on the very top of his pile. Oh, goodness. On top of the pile, on top of the gravy, on top of the mashed potatoes, on top of the carrot stick stuck in the hole of the olive, on top of the cranberry, on top of the pea. Well, he's got good balance. I'll give him that. He started across the table to his hidey hole, and there, at the table's edge, he met Cat, greedy-eyed and hungry, clawing up the tablecloth. Uh-oh. What do you think's going to happen? Mouse skidded to a stop. The turkey wibbled and wobbled, slid and slipped. Mouse danced to keep his feast balanced, pirouetted like a ballerina, juggled like a platter spinner, but off slid the turkey, whoosh, with a plop, landing smack on the cat. Plop. Down crashed the pumpkin pie and the boat with the gravy. Down crashed the mashed potatoes with the clatter that woke mom. Down fell the carrot stick, still impaled in the olive. Down went the cranberry, which rolled, leaving a red track across the tablecloth. Down went the pea, all cattywampus, off the table, rolling onto the floor. Off scampered Mouse, quick as a bandit, back to his hidey hole, ahead of the cat. He huddled in his hidey hole. Let's see, is he there? Yep, he's there. His heart pitter-pattered. He peered out. Down came the broom on the stripedy green-eyed cat. Bad kitty, shouted Mom outside and she swept the cat out the door mouse looked around whiskers trembling with fright no thanksgiving feast for me he thought just then he spotted glowing in the corner Ooh, what do you think he found what do you think he's got oh. one teensy tiny round toothsome green and luscious pea give thanks one is a feast for me the end. That's a pretty sweet story. It reminds us that we don't have to take more than we need. We must only take what we need, not more than, because it just ends up making a mess. And you may make a cat mad <laughs> and a mom mad, which is not okay. Okay, so let's get us a little bit closer here. And I wanted to thank you for joining me today for story time. I will be back again tomorrow morning at 1030 for more books about thankfulness and Thanksgiving and all of the things that come with it. So please join me tomorrow at 1030. But until then, and before you eat any pumpkin pie, you got to wash your hands. Okay. All right. Tops and bottoms twice. One, two, three. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between, 
Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Again, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Okay, friends. Well, until tomorrow, I moved this forward when I shouldn't have done it. Until tomorrow, I will see you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur, take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Bye, friends. See you tomorrow. Bye.